So now we're going to be talking about some films and shows that Lakshmi likes. And of course. So uh, Lakshmi, what are your top five recommendations of films or shows? It could be like currently, it could be of all time, it could be anything. Sass Bahu Flamingo blew my mind. And to see a woman cast like that, so that was brilliant. Pata Lok just blew me of my mind. The writing was just incredible. I'm watching uh, Bombay Mary Jan right now. Very interesting. I had no idea of these stories. And you know, I would always tell that there are so many stories in India that are not being told. How many times are you going to watch another movie on Holocaust? It's a story that needs to be told, but the kind of versions that have come out, we don't really have stories like that about our independence and only now because of OTT, I think a lot of them are being told and I really enjoy those kind of stories. I love romantic films. Any Telugu films that you recommend or Tamil films? I saw one called Baby recently that was just brilliantly done and made. I think what I got out of that film is don't die because there was one love failure. Find love no matter what and move on in life. And that can be painful or that can be not so painful. So find your way. And I really love the acting, the characters, the writing and all of that, you know. So I really, really, really enjoyed Baby. And um, in Tamil, for me, watching Bikram was bringing back uh, Kamal Sir to his own glory. So I loved that movie. I loved Jovan. I mean, I'm a movie buff. I go to the theatres for all those kicks. I was standing and clapping and whistling that I couldn't. I love embarrassing my daughter and taking her to the theatre because that's the love of cinema, you know, you go and enjoy it like that. And growing up, did you also uh, watch a lot of movies or were you exposed mainly to the kind of film your dad was doing? Or were you exposed Only what my dad was doing and in, in uh, Chennai, we weren't allowed to go to theatres. We had two theatres that we were allowed to go to. One is Good Luck and Devi Shri Devi. These were not your commercial theatres. These were theatres that we... For only screening. for screenings. So only th that Telugu people would be seeing these movies because every time there was a movie up for release, they would have it in uh, these preview theatres. Mm -hmm. Very rarely I went for a movie in the theatre, maybe one or two movies in commercial theatres. I used to go in my, my uh, grandmother's village but even that was few and rare and rare it wasn't very it wasn't a common practice now every chance i get i'd love to go to the theater and watch it so how did you get exposed to uh, uh, like hollywood and stuff like when did you get exposed rather after i went to college i was like i'm gonna be a theater actor and i went to chicago during uh, spring break and I thought my ears were going to fall off in that wind and that cold. I was like, I can't live here. <laughs> it was as simple as that. I was like, OK, let me try L.A. next. The second I landed in L.A., I was like, this is some past life mojo that's happening. Like you feel like you belong to this place. Now that was the feeling I got. And I said, OK, now I have to figure this out. This is where I want to be. Where New York is not is only for theater and Broadway. But uh, for you to do... And Woody Allen films. And Woody Allen films. <laughs> and uh, other than that, you know, the real TV and cinema work is in LA. So that's where I choose to be. But uh, I, when did you get into Hollywood? Like I mean, in terms of like the uh, watching Hollywood films, what were your early Hollywood films that you watched? What influenced we you? We had quite a few movies. And, you know, they used to have these DVDs. Then came these LDs and then yeah, came yeah. Uh, LCDs. VCDs. No, VCDs were small. They were huh. these big LDs, yeah. LDs or what? Yeah, we used to have certain movies and that we had Braveheart, we had E.T., we had Blob. There were like 13, 14 of these. So we used to watch all these movies <laughs> and those were our favorite. E.T. still is my favorite movie. Then I made uh, uh, Diet of Manoj's Son and uh, my daughter watch it and I forced them to watch it saying this is one of the greatest movies that you'll ever watch and both of them were like how much longer and I was so heartbroken <laughs> and I was like what do you mean this movie is supposed to change your life that you can find friendship in everybody and I don't think it landed the same way <laughs> <laughs> but how old were you when you watched E.T.? very young? I want to say 14, 15 okay so and how old are Manoj's kids? Dara was five <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
fair. Uh, and my daughter's nine. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, I think when I saw E.T. as well, as the, at that age, I didn't really get why people loved it. And then I saw it when I was like 13, 14, I was like, now uh, it makes sense. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't really think of it like that. Because when I was that young, I think the only thing I was watching were like, um, like really commercial modern blockbusters or the, yeah. like uh, animated films. Yeah. So I made Apple Watch Benji and I went downstairs for something. And this was two years ago. So I think she must have been five, six when, when I made her watch that movie because it was a doggy film. So by the time I was coming back up, I saw her walking down the stairs for the first time where you see what cinema can do, no? I saw it in that child. She was so sad. Her, she had tears in her eyes. She came to me and hugged me and said, Amma Ben, she's not there anymore. And I was like, yes. In my heart, but I was like, oh, baby. <laughs> you know? Because that's what movies are supposed to do to you, right? Really make you think, make you feel, yeah. um, make you push boundaries. And I think that's what it did for me. That's what I was able to see that, yes, what the movie did for her. Did you ever have that when you were younger? Like when you saw a certain film, did it like... Yeah, man, my uh, my life was ruined because of Mani Ratnam. Because I thought all men should love like that and look like that and be like that and they are like that. And there's such a disappointment out of <laughs> movies. So I blame my love life to Mani Ratnam. <laughs> Sir, it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought uh, l watching um, Ram Gopal Varma movies or Krishna Vamsi movies, I was really impinged by K. Vishwanath Garu movies and Dasana and Rao Garu's movies and K. Balachandar sir's movies. I mean, these are all movies that are beyond cinema. They gave you such depth of understanding of relationships and and it was just something else. We don't make those kind of movies anymore. But and we saw those because we had um, you know, the tapes at home and we only watched it then. And that too when my mom went out, even TV was not really allowed. So it's really funny how we became actors because my, it wasn't like a household of, you're all going to be actors. My dad's like, you're going to do business and get married and sit at home or take care of your husband. That was taught very, very strongly. Take care of your husband, take care of your husband, take care of your husband. So I thought my whole life revolved around my Very husband. So until I had a husband, I couldn't think I could act. Like, you know, you're conditioned a certain way. I thought like I found my strength because I had a husband. So weird. But now as I keep getting older, I'm like, I don't need nobody. I got me, you know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, what about these older directors and films that drew, that drew you to them? Like you said that they, the way they captured relationships, how do you think that does, why doesn't that happen now with films? You know, now it's all about how many more people we can reach, how much money are we collecting, how many theatres is it releasing. So it's just below the belt even now. Look at our television in Telugu. We still have TV shows that we dress up men in women clothing and say whatever we want mm. on comedy shows. Yeah, That's not cool. Not yeah. just Telugu, even in Hindi. In a couple Sharma show, when you're dressing a man as a woman and saying the things you do, can you do the same thing with a woman there? No. So is it okay for a man to be dressed as a woman and been saying the same things? No. Yeah. But here we are. That's one of the biggest shows that is happening. Yeah, and I think uh, shitting on women does sell, so they're going to keep doing so that. So that sucks. Yeah. So they're just, you know, they just like to stereotype. And uh, now everything costs a lot more too. Um, I mean, my dad finished some of his blockbusters in 22 days. Hmm. 32 days. Now I can't think of one schedule getting over in that long. Is it because at that time they were more disciplined on set and they had a certain idea that we are only going to shoot this much and now they tend to overshoot? They that? tend to overshoot. Um, they were more careful when it was on film than in yeah. when it is in digital. Now, digital is giving you like, what? Ta -do, ta -do. People are, I mean, when you are tr trying to set a frame these days with a lot of actors, everybody has their phones, dude. They're setting the frame. How dare you bring a phone into the frame? Yeah. But, you know, that discipline who teaches a grown-ass woman or a man? You can't. Said discipline is something that I don't think we've learnt at all and it's kind of died because of, like, now it's at least, now people are at least trying to sing sound. Like, I'm sure on a Tarun Bhaskar said you can't get away with as much. Because yeah, he and then my dad with... has a big holding uh, outside his sets that says anybody being on the phone will be killed. <laughs> I'm not kidding, will be murdered. Like, 
if you are seen on your phone. I mean, it is a, it is threatening, but hello, I'm paying you to be here for the time that you're here. You know, don't be on your phone. You yeah. go back and then don't come on the set. I'm not paying you to be on the set and it's freaking expensive to be on set these days because it's not one camera. Look, look at you with, this is a podcast I'm doing and you have a three camera setup and lighting. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't afford to waste other people's resources and when you're especially getting paid for it. Yeah. yeah, and you're doing this without it also. So look at your respect for the person who's coming, but the the lot more uh, that you're spending for a podcast, hmm. right? Yeah. So things, everything, the costing is different. The number of people on set are different. The number of lights on a ca uh, set are different. So uh, lens, the uh, the DOP just is all these lens. I have to go look at it as a producer saying, why did you order these lens? Then I call the director. Did you ask for these lens? No. Then the director will call the DOP and say, why did you ask for this lens? If you don't de do this conversation, that lens is 24,000 rupees a day that is sitting on I the set uh, without being uh, used. Four days after, how much is it? Like lakhs of rupees get wasted because, oh, we thought we might need it. Hmm. You do, you didn't have the, you, you cared about a cinema before. You only got that number of uh, lens and you had to make it work then, you know? Yeah, you, I mean, I, also limitation in a way does improve creativity. Because when you are in restraints, you have to come out with new solutions to be able to fix a problem. Thank you for saying that. Not everybody thinks like that. No, because a lot of filmmakers prefer working with, uh, like, like this is a German filmmaker, Michael Haneke. He shoots all his films with a 50mm lens. He only takes another lens if required. But most of the time, he's just shooting on a 50mm because he says, that's how I see the film play out. And he yeah. knows it. So as a producer, do you really get guso into all this? Like saying, see how structured the shoot is? I guso into my my diesel, my generator that comes and writes the numbers there. Okay, how much diesel is being poured? Because the guy can write another number when he comes in. Yeah. So it starts with your first AD to your production managers. The random checks I'll do. How many cars are there? They'll say eight cars, but there, there will be four or six. Now, I, as a producer, you're not sitting and going and counting the number of cars, but you got to do cer certain things because once I spoke to um, Mukesh Bhatji and I said, listen, I'm, I'm an up and coming producer. I will never forget this. I've been advised on so many ways. I said, what would you advise me as a, as a producer? He said, the movie is never wrong. It's always the budget. Yeah. That's and I've cool. always overshot my movies and it's shame on me. You know, you should be able to say, sorry, can't give you more than this. Oh, the film will suffer. And then the actor in me comes out and says, okay, give in. You can't, yeah, you shouldn't. And also there is a lot of like money that goes off the set. Without... If I can see it on my screen, then I'm willing to do that, you yeah. know. There was a song sequence that we were doing with Manoj uh, for Tapsi's film only. The dance master asked me to get these carpets, you know, the round ones. She wanted 24 of them. Now each of them were 3,000 rupees, so it's not a lot of money. And I'm like, but that wasn't in the list yesterday when you give the list, you know, a day before. So I quietly went to the director, which was K. Raghavendra Garu, he's a very big director. You don't go and ask after somebody said we need something. But I was like, uncle, in the yesterday's list, it wasn't there. Why do we need this? He says, I didn't approve this. So he called the choreographer and she said, no, you sit top angle. No, the floor is uh, empty. There are dancers, but she wanted the dancers on top of these little carpets. So he said, no need, I'll give you another angle if that's the case. So I saved that money on set, but you you got to be on your toes. Otherwise, yeah. it's just money just disappears on the set, man. Is there any film that really stood out in terms of production design in Telugu for you? I mean, yeah, when I mean, you look at RRR and uh, Bahubali's and Pushpa and I'm like, how the heck did they manage all of this? But then it is a family-run business for them. And they're all thorough professionals. Like Raj Maligaru's kids during Bahubali and all that, the wives were on set, the kids were just put in the car and brought to set, and they were fed on set and sent to school from set because they were uh, on set by six o'clock and they, didn't, they couldn't afford to sit at home and get the children ready to go to school and then come to set. Very few people work like that, you know, they're, and so, Oh my God, I feel like the, throughout this whole thing, I've just been talking about how horrible this whole thing is. 
but it is beautiful guys once you get into this industry there's nothing nothing better than this the highs are really high and the lows are really low but finding your balance is what this life is about in all walks of life and in any profession yeah in all walks of life this is a little more extreme because you're not looking nice amma ha huh? you tend to take it personal because you are the product right so uh, learning to uh, be objective is the key and also like i think you can't tell people you're not looking nice It's a way to steer around very it. bad amma very bad who gave you this dress uh, your production <laughs> <laughs> it was approved by someone in your team exactly and then you just like You just, yeah, it's going to throw you off for your first dialogue. Aren't you going to be thinking about it? <laughs> Can you do this, Amma? I'm like, what do you mean? So, I mean, I'm doing something else where there's a lot of action. Nothing is rehearsed. Nothing is done. Then they'll come and put one, you know, harness on me, and so you have to jump from this building to that building. I'm like, dude, what if I one slip and then my leg will get hurt? It's not like I said certain things before. I would be like, let's do it. Let's just put mats. I'll do it now. I'm like, sorry, you didn't give me enough rehearsal time. because i'm not going to jeopardize i mean i have spondylitis i have i've broken things in my body i have ligament tears all shoot all this all shoot on this so be, because they were not prepared or i didn't know what i was doing and when you knew in the game you are you're over and to no yeah. and me because of who i am i'm like i want to prove myself extra because i want to say just because i'm a woman i, I it's not that i'll do less or because i'm somebody's daughter or sister so i had all these extra that i wanted to do but now i'm like no thank you that i think somebody else can do because they do have you know people who are professionals but then they want me to do it i'm like i will do it but if you had given me a rehearsal time for it they're not uh, you know more ready with it so they're like let it just i did it anyway and some i didn't but that's something that i think new actors should also know because it's uh, it's very easy to just agree to things that you're not do comfortable do not with. agree to things that you are scared of that will put your body in jeopardy that you could physically get hurt uh, mentally you're constantly going to get hurt because it's too hot you're wearing jewelry that is poking on you and then you have to do a dance sequence on top of it these are all working hazards that you just have to bite it and you know deal with it but not something that's going to hurt your body physically while doing a certain stunt and just because you feel the peer pressure you need to learn how to say no in a way that is understood and and said like this is not something i'm comfortable with chalo i think now we are finally done there you go any uh, thing to sign off with i wish you all the very best karan i've known you since you were 3 years old and <laughs> here we are having an adult conversation <laughs> So it's really important for people to hear what you're doing and kudos for you to bringing in professional actors and cinema people or real to the real. This is my 10th year working in films. There you go. <laughs> you're just about to pop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>